Yo, 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 welcome to the Friar Town Podcast with Richie G. We about to break down this Providence Friars versus Marquette Golden Eagles game. Now, I'm actually happy that on um, this podcast I get to actually, like, break it down after the game because I'm tight. I can remember everything. Last one, I was kind of vague on uh, what happened and shit. So, let's look at the uh, box scores of this game right here. So, um, Nate Watson led the way with 18 uh, three rebounds. I know we got hurt early in the first half. Came back um, like around the five-minute mark in the first half. They, they were already down by that point. You know, they looked like crap. It was literally Duke Reeves, and that was pretty much it. Um, Nichols had a really good game, actually. He had a really bad turnover uh, late in the game on a, on a, uh, on a post pass to Watson. It was a really bad turnover that hurt him. Uh, Croswell, he did nothing. He get, he gets blocked like every single time he goes up for a shot. It's crazy. Uh, Grant, eh, um, he ain't really do nothing much. Four and four. Uh, Horchula, I, I still don't know how to say his name. I'm gonna get that one right though eventually. Five and three, and he did okay. I mean, the bench did better than last game barely, but uh, Breed, he did nothing again. Um, they're really missing Jared Bynum. Can't wait to get him back. Uh, but Marquette, man, Garcia killed him. He had a lot of big rebounds down the stretch. They gave up like two re- offensive rebounds on uh, on free throws, which was ridiculous. Um, Kane, 12, 12 and four. Uh, McEwen killed him, 17 and eight and five. Um, Carlton had a good game. Um, they all pretty much had good games, man. They, they, Lewis off the bench, 11. He pretty much scored more than Providence's whole bench combined. So, just, just a bad loss, man, to a team that was 6-6. Six and six. Like, Marquette ain't good, you know. It, it's just a really bad loss. And, uh, they definitely gotta pick it up, man. Definitely, uh. You gonna get into the refs, too. It was bad, bad calls as usual. It was a block John had on, uh, Duke, like, around the four-minute mark, was clearly, like, clearly a goaltend. You know what I'm saying? And there's a lot of crap, man. I, I don't understand what these refs be looking at half the time, man. Like, it it gets frustrating, man. It really does. And um, A.J. Reeves also looked like he hurt his calf late in the game, so we're going to have to see how that, what goes on with that. And uh, Nate Watson hurt his ankle early in the game. He came back. He looked a little gimpy, but... He was able to finish. He didn't look bad. Um, we'll see what's up with that, too, off a couple of days rest. Hopefully he'll be all right for next game. We're buying them out. They're already, like, really tight, man. Their, their bench is horrible. Like, I'm I'm not going to hold punches, man. If you know me, like, I'm going to keep it real. Like, like Croswell is horrible. Um, uh, Breed, is he's, he's bad, too, man. I know he's a freshman, but he's bad, man. Like, he – I used uh, – Makai Ashton Langford used to drive me crazy, man, but, like, he looks ten times better than Breed, man. Like, Breed looks bad. Um, they definitely need they definitely need buying them back, man, or, or they're going to be in a lot of trouble, man. They they won't even dance, man, if if they got to go three, three more games without another guard because it's literally Duke, um, Nate Watson, and whatever threes Reeves hit because Reeves really, like, he's three or seven from three. But he's four or ten from the floor, like, 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 bro, you gotta drive better than that, man. Like, I don't understand it, man. Like, it's like the all you do is shoot threes, bro. Like, you'll literally go five for five for three and then zero for five from two. It's, I, I just don't get it, bro. You gotta, you gotta open up your game a little bit more, man. You know what I'm saying, like, you athletic, you get to the rim. Like, I, I don't get it, man. It's like, I don't know. It, that's frustrating too, man. And, uh, Ed Cooley, man, like, I- I'm a big Ed Cooley fan, too. Like, he, he brought this program back from the dead, man. Like, I-, I completely stopped watching him, man. Like, I was big into him around the Ryan Gomes, and then they just kind of, like, spun out after that, man, until Cooley came back, and uh, he definitely put the program, like, back on the right track. But But sometimes, man, offensively, like, this team is bad, man. Like, and it's it's been for years, man. It's it really goes back to uh, it probably goes back to Bryce Cotton, man. Where it's just stretches and stretches, but 
it's like teams go on 9-0, 11-0 runs on them, and it's like they can't score, they can't pass. It's just hard to watch, man. It's, it's really hard to watch. It gets super-duper frustrating, man. I be tight up in here, like, that ass. Like, I really hope that he gets a new offensive coach, you know what I'm saying? A different offensive coordinator, run a different offense, maybe open it up more. Uh, maybe recruit a little bit more shooters, man. Well, one of the one of the craziest things is when I actually found out the uh, the kid from uh, Creighton, Marcus Zigarowski, I want to say his name is. I might say his last name wrong. That he's from Mass. So like dudes like that, man, you can't let slip through your fingers, man. Dudes in your backyard. You got to be able to get them, man. There's no reason why this kid should be playing in Nebraska when he can be playing right up the street. And the fact that he said that his favorite Big East town to play is Providence lets you know he wanted to come to Providence and he didn't even get an offer. And on a lesser scale, same thing with Cole Swider, who ended up in Villanova. He's from Portsmouth, Rhode Island. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he did end up going to Villanova, which is a top 10 program, so I do understand that. But still, he he ain't even playing, like, minutes like that. He's averaging, like, seven points a game. Like, you're not telling me this dude couldn't get in the Friars rotation with some of they they bigs. Some of they bigs are horrible outside of Nate Watson. He could easily be giving us 30 minutes a game, man, like, easy. But but we're going to get into this next game, which is Georgetown, who's 3-8. and Like, this is a must win. Like, if you don't win this game, like, pack it up, man. Pack it the fuck up, bro. Like, maybe you go to the NITs because after this, you're looking at... Creighton and Villanova back to back, man. Like, like it, it gonna get real. Like, you gonna see exactly who you are. You're at Creighton at Villanova. Like, it ain't no breaks. Then, then you got Marquette coming back. You gotta get that. Like, you need get back. Like, or you could be staying at eight and nine real quick, man, real quick. And you don't want to be in that situation, man, at all. Cause you still got two games versus UConn. You got Villanova. You got Xavier. You, the out of conference was wasn't really a lot of games, so you wasn't able to trump your record up on beating some stinky teams. Like your record won't look good, you won't be dancing. You'll be in the NITs. Uh, Duke's probably going to the NBA next year. Watson's a senior, so next year is probably going to be a down year anyway. Man, this year was like really set up for them to make a run. You know, it sucked that we lost it last year. Like I said in the other podcast, like Pipkins was on a roll. They was they was on a roll. Like they was coming. Like it, it was it was going to get nasty. Like they was a Sweet Sixteen team. Like like you could just see it. It was forming at the right time. So I'm hoping that when by Bi- well Bynum comes back, hopefully Watson's good, Reeves is good, man. They could get shit rolling in the second half of the season, man. But it, it could get ugly real quick, man. The only thing. That I really like, as hopeful about and um upbeat about is that Cooley's teams always fight, man. They never go out, they never go out like some suckers. You know what I'm saying? They always gonna fight you to the to shit is done, like. So that's the one thing I get them, and that's why they still got a punch his chance, man. But man, it could get nasty, man. They lose to Georgetown, it's over, like. It'll be over quick, man. It'll be done. But let me know what you think, man. Like, comment, subscribe, man. Like I said, it's the Fire Town Podcast with Richie G. We definitely going to break down every game. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to definitely try to get interviews. I'm going to definitely try to get shit popping, bro. You know, Fire Town, stand the fuck up, man. We 7-6. and six. But uh, hopefully we smack around a stinky-ass Georgetown team, you know. Get back right on track, you know. Get that get back on Creighton for that, for that last second three, you know. And then... We always play Villanova tough, and then we get that get back on Marquette, and we'll be right back in the mix of things, man. Holla at your boy, man.